Uh, selamat pagi, a very good morning to my dear friends in Faculty Pendidikan dan Psikologi. Uh, we are from uh, Pusat E Pembelajaran and with us here is our Timbalan dan Pengarah, uh, Dr. Kenneth, uh, your old friend, uh, Zhu, Zhu Fadli, <laughs> and uh, Nora, okay, our very strong uh, supporting team. Whenever you have any problem, you go to the help desk, uh, they are the two to actually respond to you within 24 hours or maximum 48 hours. All right. <clears throat> Today, we are here primarily to orient you to something called a smart version 3, okay? And plus a few other things. So please bear with us for a moment. Okay. This is the smart uh, version 3 and there is an e-book uh, step by step that is available for you to download. So, uh, if later on, uh, Dr. Kenneth will show you, if you go to the website for PEP UMS, you just type, and then you come to our website, then you'll be able to go for publication, okay, and then you'll be able to download there, okay? Uh, okay, we move on. Now, our learning management system, uh, Smart V3 INI is to support our blended learning. Okay? And blended learning is a KPI bagi semua IPTA uh, throughout Malaysia. So, just a very quick one. Okay? Uh, blended learning is a mixture of face to face and non face to face interaction. Alright? Move on. And this is in support, actually, of our Malaysian Education Blueprint, where these are the outcome of our graduates. And the enabler to hasilkan, realisasikan these graduates are all these. And one of them is shift number nine. So we are, in PEP, we are dealing with this part, shift number nine, on globalized online learning. Okay, move on, please. Zoom, yeah. So, to support and realize the shift number 9, uh, we have a DEPAN version 2.0. Uh, 2 and this DEPAN is the uh, e-learning policy. Okay? And one of them is blended learning, KPI, where by 2021, 2020, that's where we are, 50% of semua IPTA, 50% actually of UMS should be doing blended learning. Uh, we are happy to announce you know, that uh, last year, on the whole, we have over 70% achieving uh, blended learning success. And APP has also done very well. So, congratulations. <laughs> okay, go on please. When we say you have done well, we are referring to something called the Formula 1732. Now, in all honesty, 1732 is only for auditor, for auditing your blended learning status. 1732 is not blended learning. Okay? So, we like to just redefine to you a little bit concerning what is blended learning. Conventionally speaking, this is where we are. We normally, you know, either lecture or in the tutorial and we will refer to our students to some uh, online resources. Move on. What if, dear friends, what if your lecture or your whatever that you present, okay, is now recorded and made available to the students as an online resource? Move on. And if your material is available online, your students, before coming to the lecture, they're able to preview the concept that they're going to touch on tomorrow, maybe. Then when they come to the class, what happened? In class activities, instead of a one-way lecture, it now becomes a very uh, student-focused, as well as able to have a deeper dialogue concerning the concept. This is something that we call as flip classroom. Okay, move on. So traditional approach again, lecturer here, ramai students, 
120, 200 or more. Okay, so socially they are all together. And at the end of the lecture, maybe some people got some question, so ask one, two, three, time's up, you got to rush off for the other lectures. Then you give them some assignment, when you go back, then that's where they will have to apply, okay, to solve some problem and do some assignment to test their understanding. This is where, this is where, okay, uh, you'll be having some problem and asking for help. But we are not around to help them, to support them. Okay, this is the traditional approach. Go on. The flip approach is an example of blended learning. There are many examples of blended learning. One of them is this. What if, what if, our, to our video of our lecture, or at least the introduction to the particular concept, you know, uh, is here, and the students at home, self-directed at their own time, at their own pace, they go through again, maybe again and again, different learning styles, different people need more repetition. Then when they come to the classroom, they can ask deeper question. When they come to the classroom, there can be a deeper group activity probably. You see, we flip the approach. Move on. So, this is one approach of blended learning. Okay? All in all, we want our students to have the greater benefit of meaningful learning taking place. So finally, it's the student. Okay, go on. This is a guide to blended learning. Okay? And this is available. You just uh, Google guide to blended learning. Uh, the library there is called Oasis, O-A-S-I-S, -S. Oasis, O-A-S-I-S. -S. Or just type Commonwealth of Learning, C-O-L, and then Guide to Blended Learning. This is just published uh, two years ago. Okay. All these are made available for you. Okay. Go on. And within this, okay, Guide to blended learning, for example, considering what is blended learning. So the concept of blended learning, the real concept is all here. Okay? Theory supporting blended learning. Now, to us, especially in FPP, we would be very interested to know how the theoretical uh, theory support this practice. Go on. Some of the chapters inside. So, uh, cases of uh, successful blended learning. Uh, designing blended learning, technology for blended learning. So today, uh, Dr. Kenneth will be spending time with us to share to you concerning the different tools that can support better blended learning. Anyway, it's also in this book, huh? many, many other things you can learn. Uh, how to develop synchronous and asynchronous activities in blended learning and how to evaluate successful blended learning. Uh, at the moment, we're using 1732, but there's more to it than that. So this book is a very good resource for all of us. Okay, go on, please. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last year, Dr. Kenneth uh, did a survey, okay, among our staff and some students, uh, all students. So the responses, Dr. Kenneth, was uh, how many? Eh? Huh? Almost 1,500 just informally sent out, you know, and the time it was during the holiday itself, okay? So from there itself, we could get some uh, response concerning the, how students actually have a benefit or what their response concerning blended learning. So they find that it's more engaging. These are some of the words they use, okay? Uh, some lecturers, you know, they are able to use blended learning in such a way where they have the peer group, you know, in the forum to come and uh, review one another's work. Okay, so it's a preference of the students of today. They like it to be self-paced, self-access, self-directed. It's flexible anytime, anywhere, you know. And then it's interactive, and they hope that there's more interactivity. In fact, they also hope that uh, more lecturers make use of blended learning approaches among them. They like it. Okay. And all this actually, uh, we have documented it. Okay, it's time saving. Okay, cost saving. All right. And 
blended learning uh, has come to the level where the university feels that it needs to be part of the ELMPT. Hence, it is now part of our ELMPT. Okay? But I do understand there was some technical problem between Pendafta and GTMK. Uh, if any of you have so called statistically passed your 1732, but you got to fail for ELMPT, please notify uh, Nora and Zoom. Okay? Adata, anyone? No. <laughs> okay. Good. Very good. Move on. So, our challenge is that we hope to create interactive and engaging blended learning. Okay? Not just uploading and downloading, you know, of our materials. Uh, not only just forum, but even more than that. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, especially here in Faculty uh, Pendidikan and Psychology, a lot of uh, different pedagogical approaches are uh, being implemented over here. So if you feel that it's so unique and it benefits the student in this way and that way, different aspect, you know, uh, you must participate in something called our technology and able learning carnival that we had last year. Somehow, APP, there were no entries, okay? And those who participated, uh, we are selected, and then you represent UMS in international uh, competition. So this year, there will be a competition coming up in October. So afterward, uh, Dr. Kenneth will show you our approach for this year, you know? We will be inviting whoever, whoever, that you feel you have something innovative approach in teaching and learning, with technology or without technology, okay? And you'll be standing in front of an audience. We will record you, we will judge you, and you might be selected to represent UMS in international competition. So please uh, uh, look into this, okay? <coughs> and then go on, yeah. Our challenges, you know, is that. We want to bring our students up to higher order thinking level and if possible, they come up to creation of new and original work. Go on. Okay. So, if you feel that you have been doing this, uh, please remember you know, to keep in contact with Azu, Dr. Kenneth. So, do participate in uh, various activities that we are having. Okay. okay. Please remember that uh, Pusat E Pembelajaran is a service centre. So we are here actually to serve the need of the academic staff for the benefit of our students. So if you feel that there's a particular need, please come and discuss with us. Okay? Then uh, we can make some arrangement. Okay? We can customise training okay, for the need of FPP. Okay, please move on. Okay. So, uh, afterwards, Dr. Kenneth will also be demonstrating to you concerning uh, something called, uh, you create your own video, you create your own screencast. Uh, whether you stand in front of the class, like right now we sell with it, for example, there's a video recording going on, okay? But uh, you can have the comfort of doing similar kind of quality recording right in your own room, here as well as at home. Okay, you can do your own recording. And uh, this tool, uh, we have them ready. Okay? Uh, of course, there's ROI demand upon it. Huh? Uh, we expect that whoever that makes use of this loan, then you use it for about six months, and you record, and it will be shared okay? to our repository. Okay. Go on. Uh, suddenly this one comes in because uh, when we talk about screencast study, whatever that we produce, uh, many a time it is copyrighted, kan? okay? So now we are actually encouraging people to open license your teaching material. And that is using something called CC. Example, being practiced is actually MIT. You know the MIT, all their courses, all their videos from all their professors and lecturers are available online. You just type MIT courseware, MIT OCW. Everything is there, okay? Uh, and look, the type of license that they use, 
CC, BY, NC, SA. It simply means it's creative common. It means open license. You want to use it? Now you want to use it? Now go ahead, take it, use it legally. Among our students, and you can put it anywhere. And it is BY. BY means attribution. Whoever that use the material there, you attribute where you got it from. That's all they need. Money sign. Do not commercialize our product. If you take it and make money out of it, then they will can probably take you to court. <laughs> okay. And SA. SA means you know share a like, please. It means please use the same license. They want to propagate nah, the use of this license. All right. Other than MIT, you know, Stanford, Harvard, all are many places are actually having quality materials. Their syllabus, their notes, their PowerPoint, their video, all are given freely. They believe the philosophy of teaching and learning in MIT, you know, is that when they started there, they are the first to actually pioneer the share, free sharing. Okay? And they believe that uh, free sharing uh, is education for all, but real meaningful learning, uh, you got to come and interact with our academic. <laughs> so you do this or this, you cannot get a certificate or a degree. You got to go inside that and room. So go on. So this is all part of something called OER, Open Educational Resources. Okay. Um, go on. Okay. OER, okay, so when we talk about blended learning, so how does OER come in to support uh, blended learning? Uh, cost saving and efficiency. Imagine you, your materials, yeah, of course you produce your own materials, that's the best, but there are certain materials that's under Creative Commons, you can legally use it, legally. So you save time, you save cost, and so on. Huh? Quality improvement, extended uh, alignment. So if there are certain materials that are from uh, well-known professors, why not? It will help to upgrade uh, actually our quality of education in UMS. It can support independent learning. Okay, there's community engagement, collaboration, knowledge sharing. Okay, so go on. <coughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, the normal one that we use is this. Okay, or something called public domain. Public domain here means. Any material, actually all materials in the internet are all copyrighted. So sebelum kita pakai that particular picture, sebelum kita pakai music itu, sepatutnya kita memohon untuk mendapatkan kebenaran. But many a times we just let it go because we're too busy to apply. Okay, so uh, they, we can actually be liable. Okay, uh, if public domain means you boleh pakai tanpa dapat kebenaran, freely available to you. Now, there is something in between called CC, Creative Commons. And this Creative Commons is, you boleh pakai, it's still copyright, you know, you boleh pakai, but under certain condition. I'm going to share a little bit concerning this. Okay, how many of us here uh, have used CC before? Just, just use anything that is under CC. Okay, under CC? No, okay, no problem. Very, very quickly, come, very quickly. See a creative common CC. Not as a SI. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is very strongly promoted by UNESCO, okay? And there is a declaration in 2012 by UNESCO. And Malaysia is also a member state. Okay. And it says that all publicly funded content should be openly licensed. All. Uh, dear friends, you know, we do a lot of our research work. Our grant come from Kementerian or from the university. And where is the source of this fund coming from? Your uncle, your auntie. <laughs> public money. Okay. Now the public, okay, uh, one day says, hey, the particular research that you've done, can you please share to us, you know, the results? What is the implication? And you will tell them, yes, of course, it's already published. Go to this journal and that journal. And when they go there, Ah, yeah, yeah. They have to pay for this or subscribe to this and that. What happened? We have been ransomed. We have been kidnapped. The publisher takes our materials and becomes copyrighted by them. Something is wrong. UNESCO is arresting the problem. 
and saying you know that we need to make things as an OER, make it open. Okay, and hence the new, uh, not new, you know, actually this has been practiced for quite a while already. Okay. Okay. All public university in Malaysia has got CC, you know, in the LMS, including our smart V2 gun, Dr. Kenneth. Yeah. The there, one thing is too small. <laughs> it's all CC. Uh, so uh, ours is CC, BY, non commercialized, huh? and C. So people can uh, refer to your materials, they must cite you, but cannot make money out of it. Okay, we are promoting this. We are promoting this. Okay. Go on, please. So a very quick one, okay. Uh, you can produce your own license, you know, okay, uh, very easily, legally, legally. There are only four symbols to it. CC, Creative Common, BY, Attribution, Mesti Site, Nama Itu, okay. Your materials, you can put CC, BY, okay. Uh, uh, Non-derivative, if you see something like that, non-derivative, seboleh-boleh ni, jangan pakai. Because uh, you are not allowed to ubah anything. Cannot change the color, cannot put even a dot there, legally speaking. You know, some photos, some poem, you know, they don't want anybody to remodify it. Uh, uh, share alike means please use the same license and non commercial, do not make money out of this product. My videos, use it, cite me. Okay? But don't make money out of it. Go on. Yeah. And out of these four, you can come up with this packages of licenses so ccby okay uh, ccby sa share a light ccby nc don't make money out of it uh tadi mit uses okay and these are non-derivative so boleh boleh don't use lah okay so these are the good ones and you can choose one of these license for your own product for your own video or for your own whatever book go on Okay, so these are the one, you know. It can also be CC0. Okay, so it's public domain. Okay, and after Dr. Kenneth will also show you where to get quality, quality materials huh, that are actually people sharing it now as a CC0. It's part of the strategy actually. Okay, and you look at it, you like it, you click on their name, you click to their website, and you have to pay for other materials. But it's a good way of actually marketing. Huh? All right. When we say these materials are all classified as OER, Open Educational Resources, it means uh, that you can retain them. It's a five-hour discipline there. You can reuse them. You can revise them. Revise, you know. You take the materials from MIT, the video clip, uh, 10 minutes. You just want three minutes. You cut it and use it as your own. Legally, no problem, no issue. Okay? You can remix it. You can take this from Stanford, from Harvard, from MIT, from uh, India, in IIT, you know, many things are CC there. And you combine it, you become your own course, even your own program. Legal. Uh, okay. The later details, you know, uh, we have an intensive course uh, on how to do all this later on and the <coughs> human resource. But just to let you know, those who are interested, just Google, you know, you'll be able to see many, many examples. Okay, go on, please. Okay. And oh, oh, suddenly, suddenly this has come up because, uh, hey, sorry, go on, go on. Go on, yeah, go on. Okay, this one. So the OER again, okay. You are able to customize, aggregate, reformat, mesh up, edit. Dear friends, uh, in November the 27th, exact date, uh, which is just about two months plus ago, in UNESCO, they adopted, you know, in the General Assembly there, uh, recommendation of OER in <coughs> higher education. So it's already adopted. And we knew this actually two years ago. So we are ums actually we are ready okay our minister of education at that point in time was also in a unesco to adopt it so 
It's already actually with the ministry. Uh, it will come very soon. So please uh, spend some time to invest uh, and uh, give your whatever development come into the world of OER, into Creative Commons. Okay. <coughs> okay, go on. Okay, you can even assemble courses out of these materials legally, legally. Okay. Go on. Sebelum ini. Okay. The the other one, the mukit, mukit. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, some of us here have been involved with uh, MOOC. How many have produced a MOOC here before? Anyone here? Okay. But I know some have produced MOOC. The platform uh, that we were using previous to this one year ago was uh, something called Open Learning Global. Okay. Uh, suddenly, they demand money, okay, and the money was quite ridiculous. So we started to look for alternative. So Mukit is an open source uh, MOOC platform, and we are using this. So there is a course right now on how to use Mukit. Baru start this week. We encourage all of you, Zhu, uh, nanti ya, bagi the website. Maybe I'll just go and have a look at it. It's a four weeks course only. So just invest some uh, one week, just one evening, you know, just to go into it. Courses, yeah, courses. Ah, there you are, this one. Okay. So you can enroll. Okay. Free, it's free. At the end of it, you get also a certificate. All right. Uh, we are going to use this platform. So those of you who are interested to know uh, what is MOOC, at least it's a good introduction over here. Very good. Okay. It is currently on. Currently on. Uh, yes. Currently on. Just register and just continue only. Just continue. Okay. <coughs> okay. Yeah, that's a candidate. Yeah, no, it's actually like this. So, when well, this course is four weeks, it's one. You need to give one hour for me. So, you can do it anytime. Do it when you're waiting in your car, in the parking, waiting for the next two So, all you need to do is listen to the lectures and then answer the complete evaluation. You can do it in your own free time, even in class, so you can do it anywhere. And after you complete the fourth week, you will get a summative assessment and you'll get an assessment. Yeah, Okay, the PowerPoint you saw at the beginning there was some C delta or whatever is it? But it's not much. Um, yeah, the the one up right here. Yeah, they did in Epi. Delta, the books. The book. Okay, you open the book. Show the Lamon. Show Lamon. One hour. No, it's a video. You watch the video and you track your completion. The system will track your completion of the video. So you watch four videos and then you complete one module. Then complete the assessment and you're done. Then, then you wait for the next Open the report. Uh, yeah, if you're also this one. Mm -hmm. So this every week, but every week, mm -hmm. Thursday or Friday, they will launch a new module. So five weeks later, okay. Every? Every, every Thursday or Friday, you'll get a new module. Mm -hmm. I can show yeah. you later once I log in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, okay. so uh, we, we encourage all. Dr. Ennis, later on, uh, Zoo. So pass it through Dr. Ennis so that you can share it to all the your staff. Amin, uh, okay, Amin, uh, Magno, Magno is not here, okay. Then we share to all, okay. Whoever that is interested, okay. And uh, we like also to share to you, okay. This is our repository, okay. This is OER repository. If you put any of your materials over here, your materials is registered uh, and it is detected by Google Scholar. So, whatever you put here, you increase your own visibility. Okay? And it definitely will increase your citation of your work. And these days, you like it or not, Kanaka Pankar and so on, they look for your H index as well as citation. So, uh, you know, you go through high impact. Journal is very good, you know, continue that. 
But uh, finally, to get citation, how many people go for that high impact journal? You know, so make your materials uh, available freely, freely. Just share it out. Okay, and uh, over here, okay, can you move? Okay, for example, you see your faculty psychology and uh, education. It is not populated at all yet. It's zero. So, uh, Doctor Gillette will show you actually how to download, upload things very easily. Okay. Make sure that they are all original and they are using called CC license. Okay. okay. <coughs> uh, even Dr. Kenneth will probably show you how he just put your notes, you know, just put your notes that you give to your student, okay, up into this repository and it will be registered by school girl scholar. And of course you share it to the world. Huh? Okay, so why not let people cite your work, you know, and your citation just go up while you're sleeping. Okay. Uh, there are e-books that we want to promote. Okay. So, okay, okay. Anyway, okay. I just go into that. Okay. Now, uh, some of us, you know, uh, who are publishing your book, we normally go to Penerbit UMS. Continue that. And all those are copyrighted, okay? But should you want to produce your textbook as an e-book to share to the world, uh, PEP is also a publisher. We are also a publisher. We are connected directly to uh, Perpustakaan Negara Malaysia. So what you do is, example, look at this one. Okay, example. This one, Labuan. Eh? Okay. Uh -huh. Just turn it. Okay, by Mary, Daria and company. Okay, so the EISBN, uh, PEP will apply for you. Okay, and go on. Yeah, so they get from ministers and whosoever, you know. Yeah. And this one is because they love Labuan so much. Labuan, eh? So they go around to take uh, beautiful pictures and they have a very beautiful description so this book the Isahar Khan you know it's a book you know coffee table book or whatever but it is all recognized huh? and what happened is that now they've also translated this into Mandarin huh? yeah. uh, because the tourist uh, association in Sabah is so interested in this so you see they get their visibility increased through that way okay so it's a very Okay, as an example, you know. You may have uh, work done with your students that you feel you like to share, okay? So, what you need to do is just uh, prepare it either in Word or in PowerPoint, in whatever format that you want, okay? And any pictures or any video is multimedia, okay? Ah. Then, uh, what we do is that we will send it to reviewers and the reviewer must be the expert in the group, lah. So you can suggest who are the experts. So the benefit of that is given, you know, that uh, professionally be done. So we'll give it to two experts that you can recommend to us. We get the CV and then we will send the manuscript to them. Then whatever, they will send it to, back to us, back to you. And then you amend until finally it's okay. And then we apply for the ISBN for you. And it will be uploaded into our OER repository. And it will be registered by Google Scholar and shared to the whole world. Okay. And Kanaka Pankat and everything, you link to this. Huh? It's your book. You sit here. Okay. So, fast track, you know. Uh, because we are quite limited by our budget, you see, to, to work with Pandemic UMS. So, uh, do make use of PEP. Okay. We have think many things actually ready. All actually is a service center to serve our academic staff and students. Okay. <clears throat>